Hi there, Mouseketeers. Welcome to the Disneyland beat where our toes tap to a Disneyland drum. And we always whistle while we work. We've taken a close look at the new attractions coming to Mickey's Toontown when it reopens in 2023. And today, we're looking at what the new dining spots in the land will be. Let's see what the model can show us. Come on into Disneyland with us. Like, subscribe, and stick around. Disneyland is your land. <laughs> Come seek an adventure at your pirates, eh? Make the jump to life, speed. Hi, I'm Amy. And I'm TC. You know, Toontown has never been a major dining location, but it's always had a few quick service counters where you can grab a light meal with or even without the kids. It really has a fun atmosphere with cute, cartoony, immersive theming. Let's take a little tour of the counter service spots that used to be nestled in by City Hall before the refurbishment began and see what they had to offer. They used to be all close together, similar to a food court, great for a family or a group whose members all want something different for lunch. The first stop on Toontown's Restaurant Row is Daisy's Diner. Donald's girlfriend serves up pizza in two varieties, cheese or pepperoni. Pizzas were individually sized and pretty standard Disney pizzas. If you've eaten Disney counter service pizza anywhere else, you'll know what to expect. You could also get beverages including souvenir sippers and usually a few desserts as well at Daisy's Diner. Next is Pluto's Doghouse, which is seriously cute. We love the skewered hot dog on the fork overhead. Here you could get standard hot dogs with a basket of apple slices or chips. Pluto also featured kids' check meals with turkey sandwiches or mac and cheese options, along with beverages that here included coffee, tea, and hot chocolate. And the final stop here was Clarabelle's, one of two at the resorts with a mix of healthier options and ice cream. It had moo plate specials that usually included a sandwich and chips, as well as salads and kids' power pack check meals. Of course, you could also get frozen yogurt, ice cream bars, and ice cream sandwiches. Of course, there was a great little frozen drink stand that was themed to a camper taking up permanent residence outside his home. We could never decide if it was meant to be Goofy's trailer or if it was Mickey's trailer from the old 1940s cartoon. It had several frozen slushy machines that were yummy and sold chips and bag snacks too. And finally, we would be remiss if we didn't mention one of our favorite drinking water fountains in the entire resort, the Goofy Water Drinking Fountain. It's a gem of a drink drinking fountain that had fun sound effects as you gurgled down the water. The main seating section had some really nice tables surrounding the main town gazebo. It was really cute and characters would often use the gazebo as a meet and greet spot. But the land was notorious for not having much shade and with all the pavement in the land, things would get really hot. So that's how things stood when the now 29-year-old land closed for refurbishment. In March of next year, however, the land will reopen and boast quite a bit. It will have several walkthrough and interactive playground-style attractions in the four character houses, a small little coaster, and two e-ticket attractions, one of them cutting edge and brand new to the park. At D23 recently, we got to see the model for the land. And while it didn't show us everything, the model did show us the new food court. The new quick service dining location for the land combines the previous three counters into one single, kinda new location, Cafe Daisy. Now, combining these three counter service locations into one place makes a lot of sense in modern times. For one, all of these counters all connect to the same kitchen anyhow, so all the menu items are being prepared by the same staff in the same kitchen. And for another, it used to be better throughout the parks to have a lot of smaller dining locations offering very limited menus, especially at a spot like Toontown that Walt might characterize as being a hot dog and hamburger land. So just pizza at Daisy's, just hot dogs at Pluto's, and so on. People didn't used to be on their phones with the ability to mobile order. Most people were paying with cash, so having several locations kept the lines way down, splitting up people into different spots depending on what they wanted. But almost no one is buying via cash. And everybody has the option to mobile order on their phone where they can see everything at once. So to us, it is a bit more practical to have everything be at one location. So you can order the pizza, hot dogs, sandwiches, frozen treats, and go pick them up at one spot and pay one bill. Cafe Daisy has a sidewalk cafe feel, but is very much a counter service location with five main ordering windows. We love the Bling Cafe Daisy logo seen on the trash cans in the area too. Daisy certainly has style, and that aspect of her character is coming through more. Also, the Daisy's Diner never made much sense to us. Diners are not traditionally associated with pizza that we're aware of, so turning it into a cafe helps make it work with the actual menu a little bit better. 
As for the exact menu that has not been released, but we think they're going to stick with the original stuff. Pizza, hot dogs, sandwiches, frozen treats, and that kind of a thing. They're likely to even plus it up a bit, giving us another option or two, and maybe start to introduce seasonal items as well. Pizzas can be seen, as well as hot dogs, candy apples, and Mickey bars, being enjoyed by the people in the very detailed model. Pluto's doghouse has been turned into a mobile order pickup window. It has three, so that should all work out logistically pretty well. Everything going mobile order was pretty much expected. Our favorite hot dog on a fork is gone, as it basically continues in the style of Cafe Daisy now. Clarabelle seemed to be completely gone, including its awesome Clarabelle-themed weather vane. The building looks like another Toontown facade now. Maybe it will even have an interactive element to it. Kind of sad to see Clarabelle not as represented in Toontown, but she does have her spot over at DCA, and she's a character seen around the parks quite frequently. It looks like the goofy water drinking fountain is gone. Hopefully there is some sort of drinking fountain somewhere in the land, but really, people don't seem to rely on those as much anymore, and they tend to use water bottles. As for seating, it does seem to be quite improved, if not a bit smaller, though. The gazebo, it's gone, as is the hard pavement. Instead, a brickwork plaza spreads out with four large trees planted around it, creating some much-needed shade. There are six large lampposts that have string lights stretched across, creating a fun, sparkly canopy. Should look great at night. The completely new dining location is the Good Boy Grocers, themed to Mickey's Good Boy Pup Pluto. Under large market letters, there will be an open-air market that will offer some grab-and-go drinks and treats very similar to what you see at Center Street, Mortimer's Market, or Fillmore's in Cars Land. Usually, there's fruit and pickles and some fairly healthy options. And we think, though this is a guess, that this will be the new location for frozen slushy drinks in the park. It looks like the trailer is gone with the expansion of Goofy's house. And it used to have six frozen drink machines in it. And in the new model, there's a sign on the Good Boy Grocers advertising six different colored drinks in cups. Something served in a cup is pretty unusual for a grab-and-go stand, so we think these are the frozen slushies. We think it looks nice overall and a great and practical use of the space. We love that Disney listened to guests about how hot the land was, especially for a noontime summer meal. The added trees and brickwork will do a lot to improve the dining experience in the land, and we like how consolidated everything is. We would really love it if they would just expand the menu just a little, or at the least not remove anything from what used to be available here. But we're gonna have to wait and see. Either way, it should be a nice, fresh dining spot. And we're really curious to see how popular it'll be. Dining in Toontown in the past, especially in the last decade, has been a fairly quick and not too crowded experience, mostly catering to kids and families. But with the land getting another major attraction and a big expansion, it's gonna go back to being a huge crowd puller for some time. And that will likely mean an increase in and dining traffic too, which hopefully might lead to more menu options. Well, that's it for us today. Thanks so much for joining us. Are you excited about the updated Mickey's Toontown? Let us know in the comments. May the light in the firehouse window always shine bright, and may your dreams always come true. See you real soon, Mouseketeers.